Blackburn Enterprises. Thank you for coming to our channel. You could have been anywhere else, but you're here with me. Back with a new, what is this? Series review. Series review. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to be reviewing Harlem. Harlem. All right, um, this, uh, I think this was released uh, in December, so we're just now getting the chance to binge watch it, and um, I feel like a... December 2021? Yeah, December oh, 2021, okay. yeah. So we wanted mm -hmm. to go ahead uh, go ahead and review this. So uh, this show, Harlem, was created by Tracy Oliver. Yes. Okay. Um, and she also created um, the Miss, what is it called? Issa Rae's... Um, Are you talking about the Misadventures of... Yes, uh, of... Uh, of an awkward, awkward black girl. Black girl. Awkward black girl. Mm -hmm. I was gonna yeah. say insecure black girl, but that's not what it is. Yeah, so she, awkward black girl. Yeah, so she worked. She worked with Issa. Yes, she did. Gotcha. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get into these actors and actresses. Yeah, so we got my girl Megan Good. Yes, Megan Good. She's in here, mm -hmm. and we also have Grace Fire. You usually say the actresses. Okay, no, I'm Grace good. Byer, we're switching it up, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to do Grace Byer. <laughs> okay, um, next. <laughs> Shaniqua Shonda. Yes. And Jerry Johnson. Yes. Okay, so those are the uh, the four, four uh, ladies. The four ladies. That's um, the stars of the show. Which we have, which is Quinn, Ty, Camille, and, and Angie. Angie. Yeah. So I guess we'll, um, we want to just go over each yeah, character. Yeah, so this is a spoiler review, right? Yeah, this is a, this yeah, a, spoiler, a spoiler review, breakdown, Yep. all that. Yeah. So let's you, get into it. So you want to start with Camille? Yeah, let's start with Camille. Camille is um, a mm -hmm. professor. And that's Megan Good's Megan Good, Megan good. yeah. Mm -hmm. She's a professor at a, a college, mm -hmm. on the college level. And she's kind of like a, a hopeless romantic, I guess. She's looking for love, but she, you know, she's trying to, she's more focused on her career right now mm -hmm. as well. And she's kind of dating. I think she, like, had something going on with her little student, one of her students in college. Well, <laughs> it was actually, an interesting well, night, <laughs> to say the least. Oh, yeah, this show definitely, um... Touched on a lot of topics. Yeah, it did touch on a lot of topics. We brought up a lot of things to the surface that and, we don't hardly talk about. And in that particular situation, you know, the student was trying to get on. She was like, yeah. I can't get, I can't holler. I can't yeah, do, I can't, I can't, I can't do the student. Ethically correct. But then he ended up was like, well, I dropped to a class and now we can date. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so when they dated, uh, they didn't really even date. They just, no, like, smashing, yeah, she yeah. was trying to smash. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was Gary smashing. <laughs> yeah. Trying to figure out how to say this without his legs went up. Yeah, basically, yeah. They, and she was down. Yeah, basically, she they didn't was. Know why. Yeah, he started putting his legs up in the air, and he was like, "Go for what you know." And uh... yeah, I think she thought <laughs> he thought that she was Janae Aiko or somebody, and that's what happened. Janae Aiko be doing that. You gotta eat the black no. groceries. Okay, I see what that's you did what there. She say, yeah. <laughs> so you know, touche. Trying to think and he's, she was like, this ain't that. <laughs> yeah, she, she got up out of there. Yeah, real, real quick. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and comment down below if you into those uh, extracurricular activities of uh, of, of, eating, gro of eating groceries. <laughs> but, yeah, so that that's, that started early, early on. And that's uh, how the show started. It was a good kickoff to the show. Yeah, it was a good kickoff to the show. But um, but Megan's character or uh, Camille, um, I love her, her character. She's um, she's quirky. She's um, kind of I um. She reminds me of Issa, Issa but I feel bit. like she's a little bit more, a bit more aware of her, of how awkward she is. Mm -hmm. But it's still sometimes in the certain situations it it doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and um. Like, like you said, she's trying to navigate her life at this university, and you know, and she has her, um, she has her friends that she shares her life with. Um, I guess would we say, um, is it Quinn that, mm -hmm. that she's the one that she's probably more closer to? Probably so, because her and Quinn got you know similar um, things going on as far as they're both business women, mm -hmm. both um, successful, they're mm -hmm. both single, so they both mm -hmm. kind of like you know in it together. Quinn is uh, Grace Byers. Yes, Grace Byers. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't even do uh, what we normally do. Um, going back to real Megan Good, real quick. Uh, what's a what's a throwback? Oh, oh, she's in everything. She's in Justin Broom. Okay, well, no, obviously she's in Justin. She's in. Uh, I mean, I remember her from Eve's Bayou. That's the first time. Yeah, Eve's Bayou. She was in Eve's Bayou. She yeah. was actually on Friday as well. Yes, yeah, she was. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But I didn't remember her from that. Yeah, she was one she of the kids. Kid yeah, she was. She was probably had a line. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
But yeah, she was one of the kids at the popsicle truck. Yeah, she was. Um, and Grace Byers, you anything that she might have been? Uh, she was in. I heard. I didn't. I'm, I didn't watch it, but um, M. M- uh, Empire. Oh, she okay. Empire. She was there. Yeah, she was there. Niece was telling us. Yeah, so. she was on Empire. Yeah, but yeah. we stopped watching it by the time she got introduced to the show. So. Right. Right. Yes. Okay, so yeah, so let's get into um, Quinn's character. So Quinn is um, uh, an entrepreneur, like mm-hmm. I said. She kind of got her life together financially. And or she's, trying to get her trying life together. Trying to get her life together. <laughs> but yeah, she got her own place. She's, mm-hmm. you know, able to have somebody else live with her and mm-hmm. all that. So she's, you know, pretty stable. But then her and her mom, uh, which is, oh, who was her mom? Josh came in the picture. Jasmine, Jasmine Guy. Guy. Yes, came in there. Yeah, shout out to Jasmine yes. Guy. Obviously, y'all know her from. Uh, a different world. Okay. And so she came in and um, you got to see the dynamic between mother and daughter and how mm-hmm. some, like, she's kind of like, not di- she's disappointed in her daughter a little bit. She's really hard on yeah, her. Yeah, really strict. And really strict even though she's grown grown. So <laughs> she's like still, you know, judgy and all that and one towards of the, her. Yeah. And one of the subject matters that um, going on with her particular character is... I guess just following following the money or following your happiness, mm-hmm. like your okay. dream. You know. Yeah. So, so which one? Which you know? Which one do you do? Do you yeah. do you do you go for the money and do what's making the money, or do you do you know what, what's going to make you happy or what's your your dream or what you want to do? Yeah, so, there's pros and cons to both of those, and that's what we get to see. She had a guy, I think, um, when she was working her six figure job and. Yes, she did. Yeah, yeah. And, and he had money too, mm-hmm. but she was she didn't wasn't feeling that. So uh, then she started trying to date around, and uh, she ended up dating a stripper. Yeah. yeah. Ah, and who was he? Um, that's uh the, your boy. He was on one on one. Yeah, his name is Sean in the show. Yeah, his name is Sean. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so she so I was uh, it was it was dope seeing him because I feel like I hadn't seen him. In a minute, yeah. uh, he actually um, is on one of the Chocolate City. Right? Yeah, exactly. Chocolate yeah. City. He actually it plays a, a stripper, ironically, on that show <laughs> so he too. He was like the dance. He, He's a dancer. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was good. It was good to see him as well. But she mm-hmm. ends up um, ends up messing, and that's interesting. An interesting dynamic between them two because he's the total opposite, I think, mm-hmm. of what she. He is, I think, the epitome of something that she wouldn't date. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a kid. He has a kid. Is that a kid? <laughs> <laughs> he has a kid. Um, he's a stripper. And isn't he younger too? I think, yeah, I, yeah, I get that. I get that yeah. vibe that he also mm-hmm. is younger too. So, mm-hmm. so that's uh, interesting um, mm-hmm. with her. So, and of course, you know they have to bring up when your when your bougie friend come around and. and they but she is the bougie talking. friend. No, I'm talking about when they started talking about like the friend is not the main character of the show, mm-hmm. and then they you get introduced to ah, the guy. I see and, what you're saying. Yes, but yeah. she's traveling in certain circles. And she's and like, then, yeah, he's a dancer. He he, he goes to Juilliard yeah. and all that type of stuff. Yeah. When that's not the case. He yeah. So what? Like, so what? do you think? So do you think that part was realistic? Yeah. Well, I think so. I think most definitely because so we see that like in her, so many uh, shows too. Where yeah, that 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 is. I yeah. guess um, they did that on Think Like a Man. So, Remember, she was like um, kind of down whitewashing or downplaying what um, Michael Easley did. De- Michael Ely did. Yeah, what is his name? Uh, Michael Ely did. So Raji was like uh, kind of. But I don't know if she did. To know. Oh, that's right. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe so that that is a common. So, a common so, so that, that there are some of the things that some people have said about the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess as, as far as critics are concerned, are you know just doing certain tropes. And I guess, yeah. and I don't know if I agree with uh, everything that they're saying, but I guess that is something now that we're talking about that is a particular trope. But and you but but that's but that's true. I, th- I feel like yeah. that's true though. Like the higher the higher the, the, higher the money, male. the higher t- tax bracket that you're in, especially as a female, mm-hmm. you're gonna mess with a certain caliber mm-hmm. guy. They did that on uh, uh, the li- uh, what's the movie with the kids? Uh, Daddy's little girls too. Remember she was like trying yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah, thinking about your Gabrielle Union yeah, character. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. But yeah, well, so y'all comment below if um if you're making if you're a female you making money like that are you gonna mess with a guy that's making lesser than you are? Yeah, it's considerably. Lesser. Or or considered to make because he could be making yeah. more, he could be making more than she is. Yeah, hey. especially in that line field of work. But I guess it's not a um a respectable, a, a respectable field. Right, it's not a you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> Speaking of respectable fields, yes. Um, we're gonna go uh, to our other character, uh, Ty. Oh, Ty. Okay. Yeah, respectable yeah. field. She's in the tech field. Yes, yeah, she is, and she created an app for the um, LGBTQ plus community. Yes, yes, she did. So she's uh, she's definitely um, successful. Yes, yeah, she's a successful running running home company, mm-hmm. and it's nice to see. Um, that character, you know what I'm saying, thriving in the tech field. And that's mm-hmm. happening. You know, there, there are more black people, you know, owning and operating in that field. So, you mm-hmm. know, it's so nice to nice to see see that. Yeah, I agree. And diving more into her character, um <laughs> what do you think what do you think about her her, her, her background? Again, this is a spoiler. Oh alert, my goodness. But... So So um they brought up some really good points with Ty. I really like the points that they brought up with Ty. Uh, we'll get into that later. But yeah, her, go ahead and get into it now. Okay, well, I was just going to say, um, they talked about women's health and talked about like how yes. she had a, um, she had some stomach issues, some abdominal pains, and mm-hmm. the doctor tried to write it off of, oh, it's just your time of the month. And right. He didn't really even check her. And she had just right, he was a, well, he, yeah, she had cysts and all these different things. Right. And she mm-hmm. had to have surgery. Mm-hmm. And, like, did she have to have a hysterectomy, I believe? Uh, eventually, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it just pointed out to how black women are treated, you in know, in the medical field. In the medical field, a lot of times they're looked at like they're like they're not human or treated as they're not human. And mm-hmm. her character went to the hospital mm-hmm. and they kind of just tried to write it off like, oh, we're going to well, do a blood fine. transfusion and yeah. get you in and get you out. Yeah. And you like and they even was trying to, you know, be like, well, no, this is, I think this is more severe mm-hmm. than what it is because she had been bleeding, I think, at that point. For three like, months? Or no, two, no, no, it was, it was a, like two days. weeks. Of, yeah, it was like two weeks over her cycle period. Yeah. yeah. And so he kind of was just like, yo, whatever. And so it points out to the need for black women and just black people in general to, to have black doctors, field. you know, mm-hmm. and to get into the medical mm-hmm. field. So you have so people more sympathetic with us. And, right. Yeah. Right. And so that brought up her past mm-hmm. <laughs> because uh, somebody had to sign for her because she ended up passing out. Mm-hmm. And was, uh, for the second time. Right. And so um, somebody had to sign for her to actually have the surgery. And we found out, oh, my, she was married right. <laughs> to a male. Right. And she, you know is a a, um, lesbian woman and so she uh, was married to a man and she held this secret from her friends they didn't know and nobody knew about this guy he just popped out the blue signed the paperwork for her to have her surgery and went on right so yeah so that was that was quite a reveal it Um, was and I liked I liked how that's one thing that I do like about this show to me it reminds me me personally I don't know if I don't hear anybody else say this but it reminds me of Family Guy one Mm -hmm. of the things that I love about Family Guy is just cutaway scenes I don't know why I don't know why it's hilarious to me but I always (laughs) any any movie any show you're gonna get me with cutaway cutaway scenes and so they do a lot of that in this in this in this show they all also even have like a cutaway episode or kind of like a flashback episode when they flashback to five years ago and we kind of see a lot of why characters why the characters here are the way they are mm-hmm. and one of the big things I think that we get to see and I think you really get a background is, is for Angie uh, Angie's character um, a lot of people look at her like she's a freeloader and she doesn't really mm-hmm. have a Free career and her. she doesn't really yeah. you know she's not focused on what mm-hmm. she needs to focus on mm-hmm. but we see five years ago she was bald you know yes, she, she, was. she was signed um, and she was an artist you know R&B artist singer, and, yeah. and she was signed and so she was living her life like it was golden <laughs> <laughs> back then and so what happened was and I figured as things were going I was like uh, the record label is going to fold, and that's what that's what happened, and that happens out here. So when you go from being a signed artist to an artist that is being prioritized to that particular division just totally being gone, mm-hmm. that can happen. So that's why Angie's character is, I guess, in the way she is. So to me, that you know, you have more empathy for her character, seeing you know what she's going through as you know she, um, being a starving artist and having you know her life was popping at one point and then seeing unfortunately where it is now right and so we got the background on her and we also get the background on camille's character um which we her relationship with um ian with ian, ian which is name. tyler lipley tyler tyler lipley we and might know him from p valley yes yes he was down a girl, in the valley he was a girl girls get, get naked 
Yeah. No, you don't say <laughs> yeah, one, two. Check. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so you see their relationship and how they have a close, you know. They had a good. <clears throat> they had a real good relationship. Mm-hmm. So much to the point that um, Tyler's got an opportunity to study under culinary, culinary yeah, arts and, and to learning. study someone in a, and yeah, in a whole other country. So yeah, uh, she's about to uh, completely reroot or uproot. I guess mm-hmm. is a better word. Her life and take everything and fly, you know, fly over there to mm-hmm. to start a life. And he actually was getting ready to propose. Yes. And I guess in the midst she of she didn't know he was going to propose. No, she didn't know. She didn't. Know. And in the midst of and uh <laughs> and that's just like life and that just happens sometimes. I guess in the midst of everything, there was a lot of planning that he didn't plan for, like the mm-hmm. whole um, passport, passport situation. Be expired and he had to get it. Um, taken care of before he left, and, it, left. and there was a process in order to mm-hmm. in order to get your passport mm-hmm. updated. And so they had to hop through a whole bunch of hoops, hoops stuff, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to, try, to try to get that taken care of. And it was a, um, a, a a bad situation. And I guess you know, but that gave you know that gave her time, gave Camille time to actually try to think about it and be like, okay, is this where I really want my life? Because she has her life. I don't know if y'all can hear that sirens and stuff. That mugs are loud. Hopefully y'all can't hear that. But anyway, she has a she has an idea of where her life wants to go. You know, or, you know, her wanting to wanting to be a teacher mm-hmm. and wanting to continue to do that and just completely giving all that up. You know, for a man, so to speak. And I think another and thing that kind of. Go ahead. I was gonna say not only that, her mom um, was kind of scatterbrained. Like mm-hmm. she was trying to meet up with her mom before she left. To tell her like, hey, I'm about to move across the country, and uh, I think her mom was inconsistent, and so she saw inconsistencies in him that triggered her to be like, oh, I've had that all my life with my mom. I don't want to do that with you, basically. That's one thing I also yeah. do like, I guess, with with Camille's uh, character and with Quinn's character, the relationship with their parents isn't necessarily the greatest, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's a very realistic part. Mm-hmm. Uh, Camille having a parent, you can, obviously she flakes on her a lot, mm-hmm. and so you know. And then, like with Quinn's character, you know, her mom almost, you know, if she if she's not doing what exactly what you what you want to do, then she's not, you know, she's not pleased, so to speak, you know. So, you know, I think that was a realistic part of just relationship with parents and how they could <laughs> that could be hit, they could be hit and miss. Yeah. Um, going back to Camille, as far as um, uh, with her career and. And how she thought it was on the right track. She thought she was about to get hired on permanently, but then uh, the person above her ended up getting fired. Yeah. And so the new person got hired on, and it's Whoopi Goldberg. It is. It is. And she had a really good relationship with the past lady, and that happens often too. But yeah, Whoopi came in, and uh, she thought, oh, okay, I got a sister, you know, we about to. She about to get me in my position that I've been wanting. Mm-hmm. And that is not the case. Not the She's case. like, you got to work for it. You can't, I'm not just going to give it to you because we're both black. You right. know? <laughs> and some people think that way. Like, oh, you know, we got to ride together. But other cultures do. So it makes it's a catch-22 when it comes to that, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I understand both sides of that coin, you know, figuring that it's not a lot of us mm-hmm. in this field. So we, you know, should, we should be working together. But I, uh, I think another thing... Whoopi's character, obviously, she is an older character, so her her stance on the position is, you know, she wants you to operate in absolute excellence. That's that's how I look at it. And I think that she has like a big social media following, and mm-hmm. of course, like you said, with um with Whoopi Goldberg being older, mm-hmm. she's like, no, I need you to like, where's your your research that you've done. I don't need you to just be a social media presence. I need you to actually you know, boots on the ground, you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? And be, you know, be be enthralled in the uh, studies. In your studies. <laughs> in your studies. <laughs> right, right. Right. So yeah. Um I forgot I was gonna say something. I just totally uh, lost my train of thought. But that's okay. I mean I was thinking about I guess that's what it was. I was thinking about the love triangle, so to speak, uh, with Megan's character or Camille and um, what's his name? Ian. Yeah, you know, with Ian and the new guy with Jameson. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, she kinda had things started off rough with Jameson, you know, they were they were arguing on the panel, which was actually an interesting conversation. We were talking about charter schools and basically which route is a better way for our black kids. Yeah. 
as with a lot of black people, I think sometimes we argue different things. What's the best way for us or what's the best mm-hmm. way for us to thrive? And the answer is probably just to do both, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you both, there's room for both. And so I think Megan would like to be in the system mm-hmm. and, you know, try to change it within the system. And Jameson's character would like, prefer I to, you know, like to go, forget this system, go I'm out here. And, right. And so... So yeah, so you know, she starts vibing with Jameson, and I think she, she, you know, she likes him. She's vibing with him, but she still got this, you know, this. Yeah, she's hung up on Ian. And so from, you know, from again, some of the things that we've looked at from character. I mean, from people making. What am I trying to say? <laughs> Critics talking about, you know, Camille and how she reacted to Ian, and she kind of, you know, fell back into this whole thing and I think a lot of them did not like that but I guess my thought process on that was looking at it from her point of view so again this is a guy that everything has pretty much been good up until this point up until they was getting ready to uproot Mm -hmm. and then for five years she she doesn't see him and there's no closure and so I'm big on closure I think a lot of times when you don't have closure it creates you know I'm saying uncertainty with people, so a lot of times you don't know how to act. You don't know if the, should I speak, should I, should I, you know, should I say what's up? Can we have a conversation or whatever? And so, because she had no closure, that I think that plays a lot into why she reacted throughout the series the way she reacted. And so she's kind of in this love triangle and trying to figure out, you know, what she's gonna do, who she's, who she wants to roll with, or whatever. And, but, and not only Ian is engaged, so he's kind of moved on, and she's like, has he moved on though? He's engaged. He's, he can't move on further than being engaged or married. Right? I bet he didn't move on. He, I don't think. I don't think he moved on. But I think. I mean, of course, he. You know, he had no choice but to move on because she broke up with him, and he was like, "I'm not going to stop my whole world because we broke up." Mm-hmm. So he ended up dating. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just. I, I don't think he's moved on, and I think some. I understand what you're saying, but mm-hmm. I think. And I think this, I feel like this might be a male characteristic a lot of times and marrying, getting married and still having unresolved issues Mm -hmm. or feelings with other people. I've definitely had conversations with other people where they were talking about, oh yeah, he was about to to get married and the day before, you know what I'm saying, he was talking about, you know, (laughs) similar to what happened in this situation where... He's about to get married, but he he, but he telling her, yeah. like, you know, it should have been you. This, this should have been you to get, get married. So, it's a crazy situation. Um, I think one last thing that I touch on, and then, uh, you know, any other things, and then we can wrap it up. Okay. Is um, Angie's character, and I think some people not liking Angie's, Angie's character, because I feel like, I guess they feel like she was crash, and, you know, because she talks about sex, and, she, you know, she's very vocal about it, and, to, and she, she can be very loud and, and, and boisterous. And so, I think some people feeling like that that's a stereotype. Um, but I'm looking at her like, I know people like that. <laughs> I know people that don't know, that don't know when not to talk. You know what I'm saying? Don't know when to, you know, when to use that voice and when not to. You know what I'm saying? It's a delicate, yeah. it's a delicate balance. And that's similar to, I think, conversations that, uh, that I had with my daughter. And uh, there's other things about sometimes characteristics that you don't like about a person they work perfectly in one situation and another situation they they don't they don't right but I, I well, and I think with her she just she doesn't know when to she doesn't know when to turn it turn it on and off you know what I'm saying when they was in the Get Out musical and <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the Get Out musical that was so good like I want to go want to see it you want to go see the Get Out musical yeah <laughs> but not she didn't know how to you know uh, turn it turn it on and off and. And it end up costing her because she didn't didn't know when you know when to, when to hold him and when to fold. Him. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, but but again, I like her character, her being you know what I'm saying her talking about you know sex and you know being vocal about it and mm-hmm. being the fun and the loud friend or whatever. And y'all can comment down below. I don't you know we were going back and forth because I think some people were saying that it's a trope for her particular character to be the way she is because she's dark skin or mm-hmm. she's more heavy set. She's not even heavy set though. She's like, she's thick. You know what I'm saying? She's not even heavy set. Heavy set. So that, I don't think she's heavy no, set. I, I could be so wrong, either. but, but y'all comment below. Y'all let me know. Do y'all think she 
follows that ca- that you know stereotypical type character. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't necessarily think she does, but you know, yeah, I could have a blind spot because I am a male. So, um, but yeah, um, overall, um, any other characters you wanted to talk about? Just about tying the whole uh, interracial dating slash smashing. <laughs> so, like non dating uh, people from a different race, but. Mm-hmm you know relations with them mm-hmm. like how do you feel about that like that just, was a good point that they brought up in this in this show I, yeah i think that was definitely a good subject mm-hmm. that they talked about is how how just the the difficulty of dating interracially mm-hmm. and how you want to be down for the cause and be concerned for- with yeah. you know, with things that affect black people and and, and people from that, oh yeah, can you can you still be concerned with with everything that affects black people and date outside of black people? That's right. And if you when you do date outside of black people, how do people from the outside portray you? Or uh, how do they look at you? Yeah, what do they think can. about you? You know, so we they have think, that conversation think, with uh, about celebrities all the time. They're gonna think you yeah. you you a sellout or whatever. Yeah. So. I, I thought that was an interesting subject, interesting. And, and 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 how they how they went about um, discussing it. So I, yeah, I thought that was I thought that was cool. Yeah, I did too. That's about it. Is that about it? Yeah. Okay. Um, again, do my <laughs> do my thought process. Off. You you know? guys knew. Yeah, I did. But yeah, I think I think that I think that is it. Now, yeah, I just I'm just gonna wrap up the show. I think, uh, think it is a pretty uh, a, a good show. Like I said, I like the character. I guess we gotta get a rating. I guess that's yeah, where, we do gotta I get guess, a rating. I guess that's where I gotta go to. You gotta go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you go ahead and go first, then I guess. Hmm. I'm gonna give the show a B mm-hmm. because um, it has. I mean, like the people have said this too, but the four friends, the four black women that have different personalities, different walks of life, whatever, that's been done or whatever multiple times. But it was very interesting, it was binge worthy, and uh, it was entertaining. And I, and I can't wait for season two, so I'm gonna give it a B. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it a B. Plus. Okay. Um, I think uh, just say uh, uh, I lo- love the characters. I love Megan Good, you know, as the lead. I think she does a great job of you know walking through the different um, details of a life. When you know whether it's you know social awareness, if it's you know what she's trying to do at her job, you know, if it's something her love life that she's trying to navigate. Um, I like her character, and I, I like all the characters. Um, and just like you said, um, I, I, rather than I, I, I did make me examine looking at some people say this is a, the, the trope that people use, like the, the four friends or whatever, mm-hmm. um, and just comparing it to other shows. And um, it is, I guess, very similar to another show that's also mm-hmm. set, set in New York called Run Run the World. Run the world yeah. um, we thought we thought about doing a review on that too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and at first, my first thought was like, that, those shows ain't nothing to like. So yeah, like I was saying, it is uh, very similar to Run the World. Um, you know, both are set in New York. Both follow the lives of four women as they're, you know, going through their, you know, their jobs and their personal lives and their dating and, mm-hmm. and all that. So they are similar. But me, I know as a black person, we want, you know, we want variety. We want different things. We don't like the same things over and over and over. And the same token... The most, the more, the more shows with black people we have, the it's better. <laughs> so, I definitely um, see both sides of that. But, um, but yeah, that's another show. So if you if you like if you like Harlem, I think uh, Run the World is also a, another show that, that you should check out, even though they are similar. Mm-hmm. Where do we watch Harlem on? Stars, maybe. I feel like it was Stars. Okay. I feel like it was Stars because I don't think it was HBO. And, you know, and Stars has a lot of black shows. So, so I feel Harlem like it, on Stars. No, oh, I thought you were no, talking about Run the World. No, 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 no Run the World. Tell the people where to no, find Har- it. Oh, Harlem, it was uh, on Amazon Prime. I know it was on something, the streaming yeah. site. Yeah, right? yeah, so Harlem, yeah. So if you want to watch Harlem. Yes, if you want to watch Harlem. <laughs> uh, Harlem is on Prime. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, all right. So if you want to go ahead and do us a favor, definitely hit that thumbs up button. It helps out the channel and gives the opportunity for people to see our videos. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We definitely will appreciate it. And you can see all the dope videos that we have. 
And you can go ahead and do one more favor, hit one more button. It's a button that looks like a bell. You can go ahead and hit that button, looks like a bell. You get an alert every time they drop the new video. Yeah. So I guess we did, um, I don't even remember. This video was longer than I would have liked it to be. But. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but, it was a series. So yeah, it, they it was. Usually a, are no, it was a series. So um, I don't know. Anything new? I know we said a couple of different things that, about comment down below. So what should they comment? What do you what do you think about the show? Um, uh, would you watch it? Is it something you seem interested in? What do you think? What do you think about Harlem? Yes. <laughs> the show. <laughs> All right, we appreciate every single one of you. Thanks. We'll holler at you. Peace.